So this is going to be the first episode of kind of a mini series. In this episode, we're going to make things float on the water. So technically, you could make some boats, you could make all kinds of things. In this case, well, these cubes are going to be floating in the water. Now, the water itself actually doesn't really matter. We could remove the water and the things would still be floating in the same level. We basically set up a value uh, of the height where the object should be floating in. And you can use any water that you want. You don't have to use Unreal Engine water if you have a water texture that you're using right now. This is going to work perfectly fine with it. Now, this video got inspired by the Team Seas operation, which is a fundraiser where Mr. Beast and Mark Rober are trying to raise 30 million dollars to remove 30 million pounds of waste from the world oceans. And uh, yeah, I'll let them explain this a little bit more in detail. Two years ago, we raised 20 million dollars to plant 20 million trees. That's right. Literally hundreds of us influencers came together and made videos about the environment to raise money for Team Trees. And even though it's been two entire years because of those videos 2600 trees are being planted every single day with teamtrees.org but recently as you can tell by where i'm standing more and more people have wanted us to do something for the ocean which is why we're following up team trees with team seas and we need your help to get 30 million pounds of plastic and trash out of the freaking ocean every single dollar we raise there will be one less pound of plastic and trash in the ocean and that's just bonkers that literally means that for every one dollar donated this much trash comes out of the ocean and for five dollars this much trash comes out of the ocean to accomplish this we have a three-prong approach and we'll be cleaning up the beaches rivers and oceans across the world because trash on the beach ends up in the ocean and the majority of trash in the rivers ends up there as well so to clean the ocean you gotta tackle all three so i encourage you to hit the link down in the description to go ahead and donate to this cause so for this system, I'm going to be using a default third person template. I have some materials imported and added a landscape, curved it out a little bit so there's space for water and you can use any water you like. This does not require you to use the Unreal Engine water. You can use any water or even maybe not even use water at all. Like water in this situation, in this specific system is just decorative. It doesn't take any effect. It's just a texture that's over there that looks like water and that's it. Uh, but if you want to use the same water materials as I did, you can go to the Unreal Engine Marketplace, look for water, and then select the free. And this is the water pack that I'm going to be using for my textures. Okay, so the first thing, let's go ahead and let's set up the water itself up. That's going to be really quick. So we're going to create ourselves a new Blueprint Actor. I'm going to call this water. Let's open this up and I'm going to be adding two new components to this. And both of those are just going to be planes. Now you can add static meshes as well if you like, but I'm going to be using planes in this one. Uh, the top plane, we're going to move up a little bit. We're going to move this to something like 200. And this is going to be the actual water texture. And this object right here is going to help us identify where the objects actually do need to be floating around. So let's go ahead and i'm going to change the mesh to the water plane that comes with the water material but like i said it, this doesn't matter you can use any any you want and i'm going to be using the clean water material just for the aesthetics purpose good now one thing that you need to do with your water is make sure you can actually fall through it and therefore i'm going to change its collision preset to overlap all otherwise we're going to be jesus and we're going to be able to walk on top of water we don't really want to do that no, nor does our object and the bottom plane has to now match up with the size of this object so that it scales up properly in the level so i'm going to scale this up and i actually already know that my water body itself well the water plane is 1500 by 1500 and the default plane is 100 by 100 so i need to scale this up to 15 by 15 and it's going to match up perfectly now you don't have to get this perfectly just make sure it's as close as possible now for the bottom plane we need to now go ahead and change its collision preset to custom because we need to change the object type now we don't have that object type right now so let's go ahead and let's create it so in our settings in our project settings under the collisions we need to add a new object channel so we're going to create one and I'm going to call this Beyond. See, I might misspell this. I'm sorry if I do. And I'm going to make this overlap. We're going to hit accept. Good. So we have this. So that means that now we can change our bottom planes object type to this type that we just created. Like so. And also I'm actually going to ignore everything except for that new 
channel and we're gonna go ahead and uh, overlap that good so this is our water so technically what we can do is actually bring this into the level and just scale this up to fit our location where our water should be something like this now you will notice that well it is uh, the white plane is poking through and therefore it is creating a very very weird effect which we don't want but we do need that plane but what we got to make sure of is that this plane actually is at the very very bottom of the water so if you want to make this higher I would suggest that you bring this plane so that it is either below the ground or barely visible so I'm gonna leave it like so and if it's visible, I want to make sure that I'm able to hide it. So for this, I'm actually going to create a very basic material. So we're going to make a material and we're going to call this Invis. Open this up and this is super basic material. All we do is we select the base node. We change the blend mode to translucent and then we add a constant. And we leave this constant at zero and plug that into the opacity and this way it is going to allow us to create a invisible material so therefore we're not going to be able to see this object at all and once we have done that back in our water we can select the bottom plane scroll up till the materials and use the invis material like so and now it's no longer visible but for the testing purposes leave it be so that you can actually see how high it is because it needs to match up with the ground or be below ground otherwise uh, if the object is going to fall below this plane it's no longer going to be able to float so that's very important okay so the water is good uh, you can go ahead and test this out to see if you can actually fall through it which you should be able to and if you are then that means it is all good okay now let's set up the functionality for the floating now so that I can bring this function into any object I'm going to go ahead and create a blueprint function library so under the blueprints we have a blueprint function library and let's give this a name and any any object uh, any function that's going to be inside of this library we're going to be able to use throughout the entire project so let's rename the default function I think I'm misspelling this and I'm spelling this wrong every time I'm not sure how to spell this word correctly but hopefully it is somewhat correct anyway that's besides the point the function name doesn't really matter as long as we know what it's called and how we and that we can actually call this so let's set up the function we're gonna need a couple of inputs the first one is going to be the actual object that is going to be floating and I'm just going to call this float but the variable type is going to be a primitive component the next thing is like I said the actual water texture itself doesn't really matter in this situation at all uh, so we're going to need to define the floating height so how far away from that bottom plane the object is actually going to be floating in so we're going to call this float height and this one does need to be an actual actually a float type and the last one well we created that uh, object channel and we want to provide this channel so that the line trace knows what it needs to look for so the last variable is going to be the object type and the variable itself is going to be the e object type query like so okay so far so good now let's set up the actual system itself so the first thing that we want to do is we want to do a line trace for objects because we want to trace a specific object in this case that bottom plane that we have and to do so we need to go ahead and make the objects type array so that it knows what objects it is looking for and we could either select this from the drop down or we can provide this object type from over here so that maybe we have some different objects that should be interacting a little bit differently so we can provide this as a wildcard and then specify it whenever we launch this function the next thing is we need the starting location where the line trace should start and that is wherever our actual floating object is so from the float I'm going to get world location of this object and that is going to be our starting position for the end position though I want to grab this world location and I want to do minus 
vector minus vector and that's going to be the end position now technically we could provide some kind of a value in the z-axis but i want to calculate this value and uh, to do so i'm gonna first split the pins because all i really need is the z-axis i don't really care about any other axis all the other ones can stay in their original place but we do need to calculate the z-axis so to do so we're gonna first grab our float and we're going to get world scale of our floating object now i'm gonna split this so that I get all the axes and I'm actually gonna sum these up. So I'm gonna add X plus Y plus Z axis. And then I'm going to divide this by three and this is going to return me the uh, average between those scales, like so. And the last thing that we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and add this. We wanna do plus and we wanna add to this scale, we wanna add the float height like so there we go and then this value right here can be our z-axis and this way it is going to calculate and make the line trace as long as we need it and it's not going to make it excessively long in this case good now that we have done our line trace we want to do a couple of things first we want to do an if branch check from the return value because we want to figure out whether we actually have hit something because if we haven't well we don't really need to post any code but if it's true we do want to do some 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 kind of actions so i'm going to get the float so we're going to get float from the inputs just so that it's less wiring you could use this one as well it doesn't really matter both are the same and from this we're going to do a couple of things first we're going to add a force so that it would move the object up and down and then i'm going to get the float once more and i'm going to go ahead and set angular damping for this object so whenever it is in water we're going to change the angular damping to be at one and also we're going to change the linear damping as well so we're going to set linear damping this way this is going to create a little bit of a visually more realistic look whenever the objects are floating they're going to have more sort of a friction so they're not going to be really as jumpy as they are by default because by default these values are super super low uh, if we have a look, maybe I think it's for every object. As you can see, the angular damping is actually zero by default and linear is 0 0.01, which is very, very small. But by providing these at 1, 1, this is going to create a pretty realistic floating effect, kind of. Because otherwise it's going to jump up very, very fast and it's not going to look good. So, so far so good. Now we need to actually calculate the force itself. We're going to need a couple of things. First, whenever we actually hit the object, it gives us the out hit result, which we can break, because this gives us quite a bit of info that we can use and do all kinds of weird math things. And also, we need to get our float once more, because we need to know where the float is actually located, so that we know how strong of a force we need to uh, provide. So first, we're going to get the world location again like this and then we're gonna grab the location from the hit result so wherever it hit we're gonna do minus vector minus vector and we're gonna remove the uh, world location of our object therefore retrieving back the uh, distance between these but in in a vector so it's gonna return us in all of the axes and then from there we can actually make this into a float so we can do vector length and then this value right here needs to be divided by the height of the desired float. So this input value right here. So we're going to right click and get float height. And plug that in like so. Okay, so far so good. Now, one more thing that we need to take into consideration is the mass of the object. So I'm actually going to copy the float once more. And from the float, I'm going to get mass. We're going to get the mass of the object, but the mass value itself is very, very low. So therefore, it's not going to really give us enough force. So by doing some experiments, I figured out that if we multiply this with 6000, it gives us a pretty good result. And then from here, let's move these even further back. Then from here, from the mass times 6000, we can actually do a lerp. Lerp, float lerp, 
And so a is the mass times eight, uh, six, uh, 6, 6,000. And then this vector length divided by, by the float height can actually be our alpha. And once we do this, we last mathematical equation that we need to do is we need to grab the impact normal and we need to multiply this with our float from the LERP. Now the impact normal, since we are using a plane, it is going to return us 0x, 0y, and y at the uh, 0x, 0y, 1 at the z-axis, and therefore it is going to multiply the z-axis and therefore applying the force positive or negative based on the object's height in the z-axis. And this is going to do the trick perfectly fine. Good. So this is all that we need basically to make the objects float. Now we need to enable a couple of properties in the objects and run this function inside of them. So let's create the actual thing that's going to float. So we need a new blueprint actor and I'm going to call this BP garbage. And I'm going to add, let's add just a cube for this one. And I'm going to bring this to the top. So we do the root. It's not too important, but I don't really need the default scene root. And one thing that is very, very important is that we simulate physics on this object. Otherwise, this isn't going to work at all. So we have physics enabled on the object. And then in the event graph, we want to run our function from the event tick. So we have our function from the function library. And we need to provide the properties. So the floating object itself is our cube. The float height, well, we're going to have to experiment with this, but you can roughly take, so let's say our the actual floating detector is at zero and our water is at 200. So I'm saying 200 isn't really going to be quite enough, but let's say for the testing, let's add that 200. And for the object type, our buoyancy, boy, boying, boy, boy, boy thingy. Save. Good. And now let's bring a couple of these guys into the levels. So we have a bunch of objects. And if we hit play now, you will see that here are our objects. They fell into the water and they are actually floating. Now here comes the floating distance. So we set it up to be 200. So you can see it's not too, too high. So maybe I want these objects to be floating a little bit more. Now they are barely on top of the water. So if we would bump up in the garbage itself we bump up the float height to maybe something like 400 you will see that the actual water itself doesn't matter at all so as you can see the water itself doesn't matter at all because it grabs the distance from that bottom plane and then it tries to basically float it from that location so in this case, I believe 250 should be the perfect value in my situation. And there we go. The objects are now floating roughly in the level that they should be in. Now for today's episode, that's going to be it. There are going to be some more videos on this topic in this exact same project. We are going to throw in a fishing rod or a hook or something of that sort that is going to allow us to pull these things out of the water as well. Uh, like I mentioned at the beginning, this video was inspired by the Team Seas fundraiser. And uh, if you have some spare cash, feel free to open up the link down in the description box and donate some money for this cause. It is a really, really nice cause. And yeah, we should clean the environment that we live in. So yeah, thank you for watching and I see you in the next one.